Hello all, welcome to part 23 of the Wireless LAN Security Mega Primer. In this video, we will look at WPA2 PSK cracking. So I guess this is really becoming a Mega Primer right now at 23 videos. Of course, I'm not even counting the challenges. Hope you're enjoying it and it's not a bit too much. So coming to WPA2 PSK cracking, well, here's the funny thing. Exactly the same principles apply as WPA PSK cracking, right? The same four-way handshake happens and the exact same process is something we go through. Only difference of course is that in this case the uh, signature based hashing algorithm as well as the encryption algorithm we'll use later happens to be different, right? So let's actually go straight to the demo but before that quickly just wanted to show you the access point settings. Uh, I've set it to WPA personal actually one point of uh, uh, important thing I wanted to mention is on many access points well they kind of talk about personal in the PSK sense and enterprise in the dot one X and radius server sense so don't get fooled by WPA personal this includes both WPA PSK and WPA 2 PSK and this is what I've done here uh, in the personal, which is PSK, I have actually gone ahead and set it to WPA2 with Cypher to be AES. The same pre-shared key security tube is there. So let's go here. I have also opened up the stack trace, uh, sorry, the packet capture trace from the last video, just to draw some parallels between both. And now what I've done is, Let's go ahead and start arrow dump so that we can monitor the access point. Right? It's the same access point which is D link. And at this point, as you can see, it's using WPA2. PSK, of course, but Cypher Suite is CCMP, which inside uses AES. So now let's go ahead and start capturing packets. Let's call it WPA2 PSK. And while this is happening, I'm going to quickly go ahead and use my favorite victim, the iPhone. And hopefully it should kind of auto connect. I've already entered the keys, the passphrase, sorry. Awesome. And if you notice on the screen, we already have the handshake all safe and captured. So now what we're going to do is before we actually start with the cracking, let's quickly look at some of the important differences. Now, in a previous video, we discussed that whether the access point is offering WPA or WPA2, a lot of these things are clear up with the beacon frames, the probe request and response, right? As far as the handshake is concerned, I'll just show you one important difference which you would find in a WPA versus a WPA2 handshake for PSK. So let's launch Wireshark along with the packet capture we just made. There's tons of packets here, but what we are really interested in is the EPOL packets. And awesome, unbelievably this time all the labeling is correct as well. Message one of two, two F two so, so forth. And if you remember, we had told you to look at the replay counter. The first and second packet should have the same one, seven, seven, um, seven and seven. And the next one should have eight and eight. Perfect. Right. And of course we could also match the uh, different nonces the first and the third packet would have the same nonce which is the AP nonce and the second packet and fourth one would have the client nonce. Anyway, so how do we differentiate? So let's actually first open up the WPA PSK packet trace which we used in the last video and we are looking at the first packet right which was sent from the access point to the client and notice that in the key information element, 
basically this says key descriptor version HMAC MD5 for MIC and RC4 for encryption right now if you open up the WPA2 PSK trace exact same place is actually says HMAC SHA1 for MIC and AES uh, key for encryption right it's a very simple way by which you can figure out a quick difference which is there between the two uh, WPA PSK and WPA2 PSK right okay coming back now as far as cracking is concerned let's use the same dictionary right security tube is already there I'll not waste your time I'll just straight away go to the details let's uh, give it the packet capture file it will prompt you and what we really want is this d-link which is number two and if you notice we need to give it a dictionary and here we go and if you notice the key was successfully cracked right we could try the same thing with copati and you would exactly find the same thing there as well and of course you could use air decap ng to decrypt any data packets in the trace file so I typically don't remember the options so here goes the passphrase is security tube and then we can give it the trace file just this one and if you notice it says well it can see a couple of encrypted packets but nothing comes out of it uh, we could quickly go ahead and attach the BSSID option by copying the BSSID from here this may help may not help and in all probability it could also be that the packets are from a different access point set right so it looks like there are WPA packets uh, but it is unable to decrypt it. So as I said, right, these tools at times they just don't work. So just a quick word of caution. You know, it's kind of uh, unusual why it's not working. And in many of these cases, you could try the Wireshark route and check for the same, right? So this is something I wanted to point out. I think probably I could just sit down and write a new tool to decrypt the packets. Maybe sometime in June later. So in June, I am in Belgium. Uh, you know, this might be out of context for people who watch the video much, much later, if anybody does that is. So uh, if any of you are watching from Belgium, drop me a mail. I'm there for around uh, two weeks. So let me know. And we could probably even have a little security tube meetup. So anyway, so coming back, well, it's the same old problem, right? And if a weak passphrase is chosen, as we saw in the video, uh, in the demonstration, it just takes the same amount of time to go ahead and break the passphrase. That's all WPA2 PSK cracking. There isn't much more to it at all. Same process, same dictionaries, everything applies, right? Only thing uh, you need to watch out is sometimes many of these decryption tools do not work properly. And uh, I guess you need to have backups in the form of using Wireshark and maybe other tools if you are aware of other tools which you've seen works all the time, please post it on the comments thread for everybody's benefit. It really helps if you do that, right? So, well, that's all for this video. Thank you for all the encouraging comments. Really look forward to read uh, all your comments every day. And, well, we are off to the next video now. The next one is actually going to be speeding up WPA, WPA2 cracking, right? Okay, see you till the next time. Bye-bye.